a smashing, a thrashing, a flogging, a beating, a domination are some words you could use to describe the matches on this list as we take a look back at the biggest wins in the NRL era. Whether it was due to poor preparation or simply a poor performance from the losing team, or incredible rugby league skill and execution from the winning team, this is Greatest Game of All, and these are the 10 biggest winning margins. Number 10, the Sharks vs the Knights in 2016, 62 points. When you have a team that's in red hot form winning their previous 6 games taking on a team that only won 1 game, you know the game probably won't be close. Round 10 of the 2016 season proved exactly that as the Sharks dominated the Knights in Newcastle. They opened the scoring in unbelievable fashion through winger Valentine Holmes. Holmes would incredibly score a hat-trick in the opening 25 minutes thanks to his incredible finishing ability in the corner. Tries to Ben Barber and Zosai Fecky left the halftime score at 28-0. Valentine Holmes scored his fourth straight try out of the break, which kick-started the Sharks as they piled on the points with Sasai Fekka getting a hat-trick, Luke Lewis grabbing a double, and Wade Graham crossing over to leave the final score at 62-0. The Sharks went on to win their first ever grand final that year, and the Knights would get the wooden spoon for the second year in a row, winning only one game all season. Number 9, the Raiders vs the Panthers in 2008, 62 points. Round 20 of the 2008 season saw the Raiders take on the Panthers in Canberra. Michael Gordon scored the first try, but star 5 8 Terry Campese scored on the back of a Reese Wesser error, and shortly after he would kick through for Dane Tills to score. Now, now it comes to Campese, kicking for Tills as a 2 deep no! Reese Wesser would score a brilliant try to keep the Panthers in the game, but after that, it was all the Raiders, as they would score 62 unanswered points on the back of a man of the match performance from Terry Campese, who scored a whopping 4 tries, 3 try assists, and kicked 10 goals, playing a part in 7 of Canberra's 13 tries. He had the opportunity to kick a relatively easy conversion to tie Mel Meninga's club record for most points scored in a single game with 38, but couldn't convert the try as he tweaked his ankle in the final few minutes. Instead, he now sits third with 36 points and still holds the record in the NRL era. The final score ended up being 74-12 in favour of the Green Machine. Number 8, the Sharks vs the Sea Eagles in 2005, 62 points. With Manly sitting in 7th place and Cronulla just behind in 8th place, the fight for the finals was on in this Round 24 clash in 2005. Brett Kamali opened the scoring for the Sharks, then Matt Hilda would score a spectacular try thanks to some great athleticism from Kevin Kingston. Not backwards by Kingston, and then Hilda was there to put it down. Jason Stevens, Bo Scott, Nigel Vandenga, and Paul Meller would all score tries to go into the halftime break with a 38 0 lead. They would continue their dominance into the second half with Nigel Vandenga and Brett Kamali both finishing the match with hat tricks, along with Bo Scott and Paul Gallen adding four pointers to the massive total. Brett Kamali was by far the best player on the field, playing quite possibly the best match of his career. Finishing the match with three tries and three try assists, playing a pivotal role in the 68-6 victory. It's there for the Sharks again, and Kamali makes it a hat-trick. Number 7, the Eels vs the Cowboys in 2001, 62 points. The 2001 minor premiers, the Parramatta Eels, were a next-level team, but they exceeded their own and everyone's expectations by thrashing the Cowboys in this Round 21 clash in 2001, with 12 men on the field for just over half of the match, as PJ March was sent off for a high tackle in the 35th minute. See you, PJ. You go. He's gone. He's set off. If this didn't happen, you could argue that Parramatta may have been further up on this list. Heading into the match, Eels halfback Jason Taylor only needed two points to surpass Daryl Halligan for the all-time point scoring record. A conversion after Michael Butner crossed over for the opening try would seal the prestigious milestone for Taylor, which even saw a few members from the crowd run onto the field to congratulate him. That is the record. Isn't that great to see the mark up and go there straight away, the referee and a few fans have come onto the field. Well, I know they'll be happy with him. All those players get over there and they blow time out. Some of the crowd running onto the field to congratulate Jason Taylor. Every single player that scored a try in this match got more than one try, with Nathan Hydemarsh scoring a first half double thanks to a brilliant cutout pass from Brad Drew and picking up a loose ball from a massive hit by Jason Kalis on Nathan Fiend. Scott Donald also scored two of his three tries in the first half, helping the Eels reach a first half scoreline of 30-0. After a Luke Burt try to begin the second half onslaught, Michael Butner scored a brilliant individual try to extend the lead. Butner kicks ahead and tries to chase himself. He should get the bounce. He does! A Jamie Lyon double, Scott Donald completing his hat-trick, and Luke Burt scoring his second try left the final score at 62-0. Number 6, the Bears versus the Cowboys in 1998, 62 points. 
The 24th and final round of the 1998 regular season saw the 5th place North Sydney Bears take on the 16th place North Queensland Cowboys on a beautiful Sunday afternoon at North Sydney Oval. The Bears were clearly heavy favourites leading into this match, as they only lost one game at home all season, which was in Round 1 against the defending Premier's Newcastle Knights. The Bears honoured and farewelled 5-8th and 285 game veteran Greg Florimo, who retired at the season's end after spending his whole 13 year career at North Sydney. The Bears would run out to a 20-0 lead early, which included a brilliant midfield try which involved a brilliant kick from the scrum for Brett Dallas to score his first of two tries. Halfback, captain and goal kicker Jason Taylor would have to sit out most of the match due to a blood nose, which meant the Bears had to use four different goal kickers in the match. Other try scorers were Matt Sears, Glenn Morrison, Michael Butner grabbing one try each, and Scott Pettybridge, Nigel Roy and Greg Florimo crossed over for two tries each, leaving the final score at 62-0. Number 5, The Storm vs The Raiders in 2013, 64 points. When you've got two top 8 teams playing each other, you're usually expecting a pretty close game. But we saw the opposite in this round 21 clash between the 7th place Raiders who were on a 3 game winning streak and looking for their 13th straight win at home and the 4th place Storm who had won only once out of their previous 5 matches. But this onslaught was all the Storm as they would score 60 unanswered points after Cesar Wong has scored the first try and Canberra's rookie fullback Anthony Milford hit back with their first try and only try the match. But the first half was all Mahe Fanua after he was called into the side after a late replacement for the injured Justin O'Neill. He scored a first half double, saved a try at the other end, and set up an insane try for his centre Will Chambers. Oh, that's a push back. Hang on! Mahe Fanua, magnificence! Billy Slater would join the party and score his 150th try, and Kevin Proctor would cross over thanks to a Brett Finch offload to leave the halftime score at 32 to 4. Another great Brett Finch offload completed Mahe Fanua's hat-trick and both Will Chambers and Billy Slater completed their doubles. Storm debutant Tolhu Harris scored his second NRL try and Cecil Wong has scored his second and third try consecutively within 10 minutes of each other, which left the final score at 68-4. Number 4, the Storm vs the Tigers in 2001, 64 points. The 8th place Storm took on the 12th place Tigers in this round 18 clash in 2001 inside the stadium that has undergone heaps of name changes over the years, so I'm just going to say it's the stadium that has a roof over the field. Storm fullback Matt Guy was impressive in this match, scoring a hat-trick. With the score at 24-0 at half time, the Storm incredibly scored 40 points in the second half, with Aaron Mule grabbing a double, and Rodney Howe, Fafita Moola, Matt Orford, Ben Rorty, Richard Swain and current NRL bunker official Henry Perinara scoring one try each to lead the final score at 64-0 which is Melbourne's highest winning margin and the Tigers biggest losing margin. Number 3, the Broncos vs the Knights in 2007, 65 points. Going into this match, not many people would have expected the 15th place Broncos to beat the 7th place Knights, but no one would have expected them winning the match by 65 points in this round 11 clash in 2007. This is the only match on this list where a single player didn't score a hat-trick or more, which just goes to show how much of an all-round team effort this was. The Broncos opened the scoring thanks to a brilliant inside ball from Darren Lockyer to Tony Carroll. The two Brisbane front rowers would cross over through Ben Hannon and Petro 7 receiver. Jared Mullen would score the Knights first and only try of the match, but Brent Tay would answer quickly with a try of his own. A Darren Lockyer field goal late in the first half left the halftime score at 25-6. The second half was all the Broncos, as they scored 46 points in 40 minutes, which is more than a point a minute. Justin Hodges crossed for a quick second half double, Brent Tate and Tony Carroll each completed their doubles, Carmichael Hunt and Joel Moon added a try each to the total, and Darius Boyd scored a great try on the siren of full time to leave the final score at 71-6. Number 2, the Warriors vs the Rabbitohs in 2006, 66 points. A year earlier, the 13th placed Warriors took on the last placed and eventual wooden spoon as the Rabbitohs in this round 16 clash in 2006. South Sydney were heavily criticised for the defensive efforts in this match, as it was their biggest defeat in their club's long history. The Warriors streaked out to 32-0 half-time lead, courtesy of four pointers to Jerome Rapati, Patrick Arvan, Simon Mannering, Tony Martin, Steve Price and Lance O'Hire. A dummy half run from O'Hire saw him score his second try and with David Peachy in the Simbin, the Warriors would continue to pile on the points with tries from Ivan Tulmavave, both Jerome Rapati and Brent Webb securing their doubles and Lance O'Hire completing his well-deserved hat-trick. The final score ended up being 66-0 with the Rabbitohs unfortunately continuing their disappointing 2006 campaign 
and the Warriors finding some form to fight for that 8th spot. And number 1, the Eels versus the Sharks in 2003, 70 points. The biggest winning margin in the NRL era was on a Saturday night at Parramatta Stadium between the 10th placed Eels and the 13th placed Sharks in round 24 of the 2003 season. It surprisingly took 17 minutes until the first try of the match, and it came from the Sharks with youngster Paul Gallen crashing over. From then, it was a Parramatta onslaught with John Morris, Matt Peterson, Jamie Lyon, and David Violecki all crossing the stripe with a try each. A little scuffle towards the end of the half saw the Eels go into the break with a 24-4 lead. Frustrations would boil over into the second half for the Sharks as David Peachy was originally Sinbin for back chatting the referee, but then he was sent off continuing to argue his point. Yeah, made it pretty easy for them. Flop. Three or Second four time. negative runs. Yes, Dave. Come here. Three and four times, your players are making the tackle, then they're jumping back on. That is not acceptable. They're not acceptable. Their hands and, knees, and you're not making it a dominant tackle for us. They're getting up and playing the ball. You, apparently, that's a dominant don't, tackle. Don't no, listen. Don't come here. Come here. Don't wave your hands to start with. Okay. Don't wave your hands. That's how I talk, no. Shane. That's right. how I talk. That's right. Listen to me. Listen to me now. Yeah. Okay. A dominant tackle in here. Okay, they've got to get off. Got to get, get off. No, where are you going? They're getting on their hands and knees. Then they're doing a tap. Dave, come here. Where are you going? No, 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 no. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Peachy's where are you got going? 10. David Peachy continues to walk up He's the off. tunnel. He's he has off. been sent! He's off. He's Peachy off. has been He's sent! Off. He's off. Then, after four consecutive penalties, Danny Nutley was sent to the Simbin, which allowed Jason Mooney to cross over against 11 men. Ash Graham crossed over, and then things went from bad to worse for the Sharks, as Dal Newton would be sent off for a high tackle, leaving the Sharks with only 10 players on the field for the next five minutes. Jamie Lyon scored his second and third try consecutively in a matter of minutes. Nathan Kalis and Lee Hopkins scored a try each, with Ash Graham scoring his second. Then when the Sharks finally had the ball, they had no answers for the Eels, so they decided to have a shot at field goal, despite trailing 58-4 with 11 men, because why not? James Webster crossed over and Jamie Lyon scored his 4th and 5th try, which is the most by a single Parramatta play in the club's history. Nathan Highmarsh even had an attempt at goal, but he missed it to the left. After a bizarre game of football, with two send-offs and two Simbins, the 74-4 Parramatta win is the biggest winning margin in the NRL era. So, what did you think of our list? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, chuck us a like on Facebook and this video, follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our channel for more Rugby League Countdowns.